Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this special bonus episode of Breath of Fire 3. When we last left off, well, I beat the game. And today we're going to be talking about the Fairy Village. Now, the Fairy Village starts with this one room. But, you start with one room and like four, three or four fairies. But, as you uh, hunt clear land, and build new buildings, you get access to more rooms, more fairies, and which allows you to do the scholar. And what the scholar does is raises your culture and your job. I'm not entirely sure what culture does, but I do know the maximum culture is seven, and that it's a good idea to max it. So, I usually... My usual strategy is to have this first house uh, be a scholar merchant... Uh, a scholar culture and just have someone in there until the... Uh, put the smartest fairy in there until I've maxed up my culture. And then I put the other... I put one of them on clearing, one of them on hunting. I put, you know. And then when my next fairies are born, I put them on building and clearing and hunting, you know. And, and I do that until, well, I've maxed up my culture. And then I switch to uh, learning new jobs. Because the new jobs come quick enough. Now, as for the new jobs, you, to learn new jobs, you just do click that. You can do merchants, which you can do weapons, items, or handymen. And there are two sets of each, speed or ability. Now, the weapons are the second most useful. The items are useless, I would say. And uh, the handyman is the most useful. The Although you can buy, with a, an ability weapon shop, you can buy Nina's ultimate weapon, the Ouroboros there. It's the last thing they sell. It's the only place you can get it. So I recommend, what I like to do is I like to open a shop, let them get everything in it they're going to get, and then just buy what I want out of it. And then switch it to something else. Uh, I, use, I like to keep one handyman around because, and that's what this is, I like to keep one handyman around because the handyman merchants sell soul gems. And soul gems are really uh, pretty much invaluable for defeating the uh, Archmage and the Berserker before you're level 50, 55, 60 in that range. Because uh, they will one shot you, and you pretty much can't do anything about it except wear a soul gem. Uh, or revive yourself if you don't feel like using soul gems. Uh, the inn is a uh, an inn. There's really not much to say about it. However, if you put extra fairies in there, they'll tell you things like your playtime and uh, little tidbits about you. The gift shop is good if you want, if you grind a lot or have a lot of free time, it's a good easy way, it's a good easy non-random way to get yourself a spirit ring. Now, uh, based on the number of battles you fight, it gives you an item. And then once you talk to the fairy, he'll give you you know, whatever you've earned. Uh, 500 battles or more nets you a spirit ring. Uh, before that, it's uh, a shaman's ring and then a, a spirit fruit. I mean, a wisdom fruit before that, I think. I think think that's the... But anyway, 500 battles is the only thing I'm, like, sure of. It's also... The uh, gift shop is also the best way to farm up fish heads. If you go outside and fight exactly seven battles and come back in the fairy will give you a fish head. And now, uh, what does this mean for you? I'll talk about in a later bonus video. Uh, let's see, the gift shop. Fortune is mostly useless. Uh, they really, they'll tell you things like little little uh, tidbits about the game, like uh, that's how I found out that Gar was actually uh, strong to fire. He has in it fire resistance. The fairies here tell you. Uh, little little tidbits like that, but really that's just a for fun job. They don't. It doesn't really do anything. 
Uh, the Explorer's Guild is probably the, um, potentially, I will say, the most lucrative job that the fairies can have. <coughs> you can find all of the best stuff in here. <coughs> you can find Divine Helmets. That's where I got my Ivory Charm. I actually got it from an Explorer Expedition. Now, I know I did most of my fairy stuff off-screen. I didn't really do it uh, on-screen. But that's because it takes a lot of extra time. And I, I'm not really one for the fairies. I usually just set them and forget about them. Uh, because, really, it's a, it's a mid-game uh, bonus. But, really, I just don't like to mess with them. Antiques is uh, an interesting thing. The items that you pick up along the game that say appears valuable, you can actually sell them for much more money at an antique shop here in a fairy village. For example, if you go fight the Codgers outside of Commandant, you can steal rare books from them, which sell for like 4,000 zenny. It's a really good way to get money in the mid-game, especially if you're buying all the expensive stuff out in Commandant. The music shop, it's a music test. There's really not much to say about it. Uh, if extra fairies don't really do anything except for you have to have if you have two fairies it opens up one extra song that you can't get with just one fairy and if you have two fairies it opens up two extra fairies for a total of three it opens up another song that you can't get unless you have three fairies the casino is really I'll just have to show you that what it does is there's two games you can play there's a high low game where she puts nine cards out in a row and you, uh, she flips over the first one, and she goes, is this next card higher or lower? And then you basically go. And you go down the line until, you know, you get it. And you get it right or wrong. And you can choose to go all nine cards down, or you can choose to go two. Now, the payments for getting one or two cards is, like, stupidly low. It's, it's not even worth it. It's like one point, it's like ten. 10% increase and then like a 30% increase, but the uh, the increase for uh, guessing all nine cards right is astronomical. It's like 250 something percent or more. It, it's it's incredible. <coughs> Although your chances of legitimately guessing all the numbers right is pretty slim. The second game that the casino does is called ba it's a basically a number guessing game. You have a three digit number and you have to guess the numbers correctly. You have eight tries, I think. And if you get it right within those eight tries, you get a prize, depending on how many tries it took you. And it, uh... Basically, you're never going to get it right on one try. If you do, count yourself lucky. I think I've done that once. And, uh... Well... I've, I've never done it again, and that was years ago. Uh, interesting to note that in the number guessing game, the prizes actually change after you get a new game, after uh, the post game, after you defeat Miria, the prizes change. Uh, for guessing it right, you can get a, uh, a spirit ring, among a shaman's ring, and then... Uh, something else that I don't remember but uh, after you beat Miria they throw a Goo King sword into there so you know now the copy shop is an interesting little feature what it does is you get a fairy there with a really high intelligence and you give them an item and it has you, you fight a number of battles depending on what item it is each item has a different number uh, and you come back and they will have either met not or made they either will or will not have made a copy of that item thus giving you two back there's actually three possible outcomes one oh excuse me they make your copy and you get two items back two they don't make your copy and you just get your original back or three they flub it and you get a rice ball so and actually, most of the fairy village can be manipulated as long as you save before you come in here. Uh, it keeps track of how many battles you've done, 
so to let you know to to let the game know when to trigger something, but the actual what actually triggers is not decided into, until you walk into the game. For example, on the Explorers Guild, uh, whether or not the fairy died is triggered on when you come in. So if you come in, if you save, then come in and then check your billboard, <coughs> it'll say fairy died. Well, you leave, you come back in and you check it. You reload your game, come back in and check it, and then it might say that the fairy lived. At which point, you go, and another way you can manipulate it is you can go into your one of your inns that you have here in the fairy village and save the game, and then go talk to your fairy and the item that that fairy gives you on your explorer is actually only decided when you speak to the fairy so you could theoretically reload countless times until you got the item you wanted uh... the copy shops uh, whether or not it's a success is decided when you walk in uh... the entrance of the place uh... nothing Several things are decided that way. Let's see. Uh, to gift shop, the casino, the gift, the music shop, the antique shop, the fortune shop, and the gift shop and the inn are all unskilled labor. <coughs> Let me find a good fairy with a good, good bars. Okay, here's a good example. The red bar is your hunting and uh, outdoorsmanshipy ability, I guess. It actually governs two things. It governs your hunting ability, which is how much food they bring in when they hunt, when you put them there, and it governs their survivability when you send them out on a exploration trip. Uh, another good use for exploration is to kill off shitty fairies like that. That's a shitty fairy. I didn't really bother with it because, well, you know, really, the, in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter. Anyway, where's that fairy I was using? Anyway, there we go. The green bar is their physical strength. As far as I know, that only affects clear and build. I, I don't think it affects any of the other jobs. The blue bar, the dark blue bar there underneath the green one, uh, is their merchant ability. It affects how fast they get new items in the merchant shops uh, the, long, the, the more full the bar is the less battles you have to do to get new uh, merchandise and the light, the sky blue bar is their intelligence it affects things such as copying the scholar job how fast will the culture rise how fast will you learn new jobs uh, the success rate of copying and I think that's it Oh, it also does affect fortune. Yes, that actually is skilled labor. Uh, the smarter a fairy, the more relevant the uh, fortunes will be. You put a stupid fairy in there, they just tell you nonsense. Anyway, this has been my... Well, no, I, I guess I could play a casino game. Just to show you how they work. Now, you may remember at some point I had, like, this incredibly stupid amount of money. That's because I was actually filming this, uh, sequence right here. In a, uh, previous sitting, and it didn't record right, and I accidentally saved the game, which I wasn't thinking and saved the game, and I ended up with, uh, 600,000 zenny. So anyway, the way this game works is... Is they give you a give you one card. Sometimes they'll open uh, other cards, and you can abuse this by save stating. By the way, because the cards don't change. But that's the general gist of it. And I'll show you uh, the guessing game. Now, like I said, the guessing game it's like astronomically. You have to like be astronomically lucky to get it on one try. You need at least 500 zinni, I know, I know. Now, uh, if you don't mind cheating, you know, with save states and stuff, and you're playing on an emulator, 
<clears throat> the number guessing game is actually a really good way to get ivory dice. If you get it on the third try, you have a really good chance of getting an ivory dice, which you, as you may know, the ivory dice doubles the amount of experience that an enemy will give you. Okay, yeah. The second, if you guess it in two tries, you can get speed boots. Although the uh, the prizes for number for guessing on one and two tries changes after you get uh, a clear save file. So, just to show you how this works. Okay, I test one one one. That means uh, the red number is the number I got in the right spot. The blue number is the numbers I got right, but got them in the wrong spot. So. Alright. I did not mean to do that. Three, eight, six. Alright, so all three of those numbers are correct, they're just in the wrong spot. So let's try 8, 3, 6, 8. I get a napalm. And that's, to, that's how the casino works, and that's really how uh, the fairy village works in a nutshell. Uh, if you want to know more, really it just it's just best to get out there and play with it and see what you, know, you like to do with your fairy village. That's pretty much like how I like to build mine, though. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time on the next bonus episode of Breath of Fire 3. Bye.